respected principal, learned professors, research scholars, and, and real students. Good morning, one and all. The blessings of the God Almighty, let us start the program. May I request Dr. N. Meena Kumari, principal, APC Mahalakshmi College for Women, to welcome the participants. Ma'am, please. Honorable President of our college, Madam Secretary, beloved Dr. Sadi Boma, Director, and Aided Courses, distinguished guys, Chief Guest, dear faculty, my dear students, a very good morning to all. First of all, I would like to thank our Honorable President, Sri APC Chakalingam, for having given consent to organize this webinar. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome the resource person, Dr. Thangavil, Assistant Professor, Department of Environmental Sciences, Perrier University, Salem, to give a talk on PyTOR Meditation Technologies and Overview. My heartfelt welcome to learned professors, scholars, and my dear students. I have heard there are 1,500 responses from the participants out of this. 31 responses from other countries. I congratulate the organizers, Dr. Kogila Subhatra Christi and Dr. Yogeshri Nidhya Christi, uh, head the Department of Chemistry, and Dr. Yogeshri Nidhya, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry. On behalf of the management and PG Department of Chemistry, once again, I extend my warm welcome to you all and wishing the program a great success. I'm sure that you will feel enriched with knowledge after the completion of this event. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your warm welcome. May I request Dr. H. Kogila Subhatra Kustri, head Department of Chemistry, to introduce the resource person. Ma'am, please. Good morning, one and all. I am very happy to introduce the resource person, Dr. P. Tangavel, Assistant Professor, Department of Environmental Science, Padia University, Salem. He has worked as a visiting scientist in USA during the year 2005 to 2007 and worked as an associate professor in postdoctoral research school of environmental science and engineering, Sun Yatsen University, China during the year 2009 to 10. He has received Best Scientist Award in environmental science from Pearl Foundation, Madurai, Tamil Nadu, he has rich research experience. His citation index value is 980, SNIP factor value is 22.883, SJR factor value is 20.566. Added to the credits, he had authored quite a few books in his field of specialization. He has more than 40 research publications in international and national peer-reviewed journals. He has operated many projects funded by TST, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, New Delhi, and Postdoctoral Science Foundation, China, worth of more than crore. He has visited many countries like USA, Canada, South Korea, China, and Thailand in connection with economic activities. Hearty welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Let me hand over the session to Dr. Tangavel. Over to Thank you, sir. You. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, a humble request to all of you. We post your questions only in the chat box. No greeting messages for the smooth conduct of the program. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, Professor V.R. Mohan and respected principal, respected head of the department, and uh, organize other uh, faculty members you know, to organize uh, for giving me an opportunity in a uh, to deliver the lecture and to give my views on phytoremediation technologies and overview. And it's a vast topic. I, it's a vast topic. I would like to uh, briefly uh, explain what are the phytoremediation technologies when they have been widely used throughout the country in a nutshell manner. And I would like to mention a brief outline of that. Uh, my lecture is uh, the categories of phytoremediation. And among the different categories, it's more than seven to eight categories. I would like to highlight exclusively for phytoextraction in this uh, lecture. And what is the role of hyperaccumulators uh, in the phytoextraction strategies? 
and recently uh, the two strategies has been adopted in european countries and uh, some uh, east uh, asian countries like phyto mining and agro mining and to deployed the uh, decontamination programs in a moderate to large scale manner and uh, if time permits i would like to explain a few successful phyto remedies and field trials deployed throughout the world why we need to pay more attention about the soil uh, because the soil is the fundamental it delivers a different uh, perspectives of the ecological functions in the our earth system like uh, climate regulation nutrient cycling habitat organization carbon sequestration that's the most important now we everyone be talking about the global climate change issues even though we knew about uh, trees or the forest canopy is one of the major uh, carbon sequestration ability but recently soil also can have have the ability to sequester with the carbon and also its uh, cultural heritage and several uh, roles in ecological with the functions and uh, another one part of the view it is a central role for both the food security as well as the water security so it plays a major with the role and uh, this is the recent uh, report uh, published by the um, institute for advanced sustainability studies from germany and uh, they have to mention about the carbon sequestration ability even in africa it's more in uh, uh, trees but uh, in africa but uh, in the scenario is entirely different in europe more carbon when the stored at the uh, soil rather than the tree cover so that's why we need to pay more attention about the soil conservation and also now the soil uh, has threatened with several uh, aspects even for pollution desertification deforestation uh, soil erosion and the soil sealing so now everyone when they uh, talked about the urbanization and uh, increasing the urbanization rates and that's why the global soil partnership the fao food and agricultural organization in rome italy they have uh, set up for a global uh, soil partnership program in that global soil partnership program they have to organized with the several uh, thematic frameworks uh, in uh, soil pollution and the uh, soil uh, uh, increase the soil organic carbon content uh, and so many things and the recently they have to released uh, about the global soil contamination report uh, and how that extent of the global soil pollution in respect to that of uh, heavy metals and pesticides uh, and the recent report according to the chinese environment uh, the agency says 16% of chinese soils and 19% of agricultural soils has been already contaminated and in um, uh, 3 million approximately 3 million potentially polluted sites uh, has been contaminated in european union and more than 1300 polluted sites has been identified in usa and in uh, australia 80000 sites has been already uh, contaminated but in the uh, pathetic situation is even in that uh, lack of information existing for the soil pollution at least in especially in the low income or middle income countries uh, so that's why we need to urgent implement about the global assessment of soil pollution um, pollution and in the another recent issues is about the uh, united nations forum for uh, uh, conservation of uh, the uh, desertification and it's a international uh, organization has uh, set up and it's almost uh, based on that data already 12 million hectares of uh, productive uh, land across the world every year when they have going to be degraded at least one quarter of the global land when it has been degraded in the past two de uh, decades so that's why and uh, for the last uh, the host when the, the uncd meeting for the last meeting india is the host to conduct that meeting and the desertification and the land degradation of selective uh, districts of india based on that data about 30% of the land when it has been already degraded in india so that's why our india's target is by 2030 we need to uh, restore 328.7 million hectares because already 96.4 million hectare uh, hectares already degraded so that's the target the new target is uh, 26 million hectares we need to restore it this is the uh, one review article published by in panos uh, in year of 2013 and uh, they have to clearly uh, explained about uh, what is the potentially contaminated sites in european countries and how much they have to contaminated or potentially contaminated 
and how much they are reclamated or uh, uh, remediated so that's why we, uh, such kind of the data is uh, uh, lack in india and other developing nations and this is the example of uh, china in the according to the soil pollution and prevention uh, control action plan in 2010 and it seemed to make 90% of the polluted farm lands for human use by 2020 or 95% by 2030 this is the china's 13th five year uh, plan and uh, based on that uh, so many projects is going on more than uh, 100 remediation projects when is going on at present in china to remediate the contaminated sites especially for the heavy metals in uh, cadmium and arsenic and why we need to pay more attention because um, among the top 10 uh, global polluted uh, uh, sites uh, uh, in two top uh, two it's occupied in india like sukinta in odisha and wapi in gujarat and these two are uh, most potentially contaminated sites based on the chromite mines and also for the mercury contaminated sites respectively and uh, this is the general background about the global soil pollution scenario at present and uh, what are the remediation technologies even though we used for uh, so many physical and chemical process uh, like desorption uh, uh, incineration vitrification and uh, soil capping uh, electrokinetic remediation uh, so many physical chemical technologies when has been already deployed but recently they have to pay more attention about the bio remediation strategies and phyto remediation strategies bio remediation is simply by using microbes to remediate the contaminated sites either for the terrestrial or aquatic environment and for the phyto remediation is a plant based remediation and uh, especially for uh, to remove the contaminants either in the terrestrial environment or uh, aquatic environment um, and uh, in general they have a two uh, strategies uh, even though they have a several categories uh, for the phyto remediation isolation or containment technology and the removal technology containment technology we need to arrest the metal mobility up to the substrate level and the removal technology is we need to remove the uh, pollution especially for the heavy metals from the substrate into another state that's the uh, strategy and this is the brief history about the phyto remediation strategy first they have to implemented in uh, Uh, by the plant uh, Alaysum Bertoloni in the year of 1948 by the nickel accumulation or the uh, removal of the nickel from the um, ultramorphic soils. And that concept was introduced by Robert Brooks uh, from Massey University in New Zealand in the year of 1977. And later they have been implemented uh, into the nuclear disaster uh, uh, site at Chernobyl, Ukraine in the year of uh, 1986 by Phytotech. It is a uh, commercial company in USA. And Iowa City, they have used it for uh, so many landfill sites, uh, even for uh, super fund uh, sites. So many super fund sites uh, has been used with this kind of technology by US EPA. And in, this is the brief categories. Uh, they have uh, so many categories uh, is there. Phyto extraction and uh, phyto accumulation, and both are the same. and uh, the accumulation of heavy metals in the above ground plant pots uh, rather than the below and for the phyto filtration they have used for rhizo filtration and biosorption and the metals absorbs up to the root surface phyto degradation or phyto transformation exclusively it is utilized for organic uh, substance or organic pollutants that are degraded by the plants uh, through the uptake and by using some of the microbes phyto volatilization phyto immobilization is uh, as i have already mentioned it is a containment technology to arrest the metal mobility by using either organic substrate or some other synthetic chelating agents and others and uh, mainly that can be used for the mine site reclamation and the plant assisted bio remediation these are all organic pollutant degradation so many uh, categories phyto stimulation rhizo degradation rhizo remediation and so many categories and this is the broadly used categorization we have commonly used phyto extraction is the contaminant for example heavy metals in presence in the soil that can be accumulated in the above ground plant pots especially in the uh, leaf portion uh, above ground portion especially in the vacuolar sequestration phyto degradation is especially utilized for organic pollutant and plants and associated microbes they have to degrade the toxic into non toxic forms rhizo filtration plant roots absorbs the metal from the waste water and it is utilized for the aquatic uh, remedies and especially the typha latifolia 
and water hyacinth and some other uh, hydrophytes they have been utilized for such kind of rhizofiltration practices blastofiltration it is generally used the ceilings absorbs metal from the waste water any kind of effluents and normally the blastofiltration it is used for the biosay studies whether the plant can be able to tolerate for that particular effluent because of the heavy metal contamination or any other contaminant whether it is a tolerant or not so that's it, it is mainly used for the biosay studies phyto stabilization it's mainly used for the uh, mine site reclamation the especially for the plant uh, arrest the metal mobility up to the substrate level by using the synthetic chelates or any other organic substances like poultry litter agricultural wastes some other uh, so many organic uh, amendments are there and phyto volatilization especially we used for the metalloids like um, arsenic selenium like that mercury so we used such kind of the things volatilization of pollutant into the atmospheric uh, via plants that's the phyto volatilization so these are the broadly used categories but and uh, due to the time constraint i would likely uh, i would like to mainly focus on the phyto extraction and what are the plant species especially for the hyper accumulator plants utilized for such phyto extraction strategies yes i have already mentioned phyto extraction is nothing but the accumulation of heavy metals in the above ground parts especially in the leaf portion that is vacuole portion that is the vacuolar sequestration so in general there are the two kinds of uh, hyper accumulation hyper accumulation means excessive accumulation of heavy metals that's called hyper accumulation like a hyper uh, bb uh, something like the hypertension like that and uh, this is a uh, two broadly classified according to the perensky et al in the year of 2001 natural hyper accumulation and induced hyper accumulation these are the two strategies of phyto uh, extraction and natural hyper accumulation and the successful of the phyto extraction strategy is entirely depends upon the bio availability of the heavy metals in the soil or the substrate and the type of the plants when we chosen for that remediation so these are the two main criteria for successful of the phyto remediation strategies and in the natural hyper accumulation the bio availability of heavy metals was more and no need to add increase that increase the bio availability without any additional chelating agents or anything so the plant also can able to accumulate more heavy metals uh, in from the substrate but in the uh, case of induced hyper accumulation the generally the bio availability of heavy metals is low depending upon the various soil physicochemical characteristics like ph and other uh, scenarios the cation uh, content in that soil so we need to add synthetic chelates or any chelating agents like uh, npa edta egta like that so we need to increase the bio availability of heavy metals in the substrate to uh, help to enhance the uptake of heavy metals from the uh, plants so these are all the two uh, strategies it, this is the general scenario about the bio availability of heavy metals for plant uptake in broadly categorized the readily bio available for cadmium nickel zinc arsenic copper these are all readily bio available metal and moderately bio available cobalt manganese and ferrous and uh, hardly bioavailable is uh, lead chromium and uh, uranium so that's why we need to pay more attention even once the lead when they is added into the soil like lead contaminated soil it is uh, the removal of lead from the soil it is very difficult because of the longer persistence time because lead more than 200 years uh, the persistence uh, time of uh, lead in that uh, soil so yes i have already mentioned the successful of the phyto extracts efficiency it's entirely depending upon the availability of heavy metals in the soil so next we uh, classified into according to that uh, the becker et al and they have to classify the uh, metal contaminated sites into primary sites secondary sites and tertiary metalliferous sites primary sites it's uh, due to generally metal ore outcropping without any anthropogenic impact without any human interferences and this is all the most of the part of central europe alps and balkan region so that's why the phyto mining and others from the strategies when they has been deployed in balkan region and central europe region and secondary sites resulting from the mining sites like mining activities and uh, deposition of the spoil or uh, mine site slug waste and other things uh, approximately 1% of the global lands when they has been influenced by such kind of uh, activities and tertiary metalliferous sites like our industrial effluents discharged into the soil and in addition to that municipal solid waste biosolids containing heavy metals 
and uh, sludge and other uh, things, uh, transportation and other activities. And the classification of uh, secondary sites, it's uh, like that serpentine soil, like ultramorphic soil, and uh, due to the time constraint, I am not going in depth about those things, but you should know the things, what about the classification of the secondary sites, so serpentine sites, it's uh, mainly for uh, nickel rich uh, ultramorphic soil mainly in nickel uh, and the other uh, thing and lower in calcium phosphorus and potassium and the plants when the associated for these sites is called as a serpentinophytes and especially new caledona cuba or turkey and the calamine soil it's naturally from uh, lead sulfide or zinc sulfide and other non-sulfide zinc minerals mainly enriched with the zinc lead and cadmium it's mainly European region, Belgium, France, Germany, and Poland, and in uh, South Asian region, China, Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and rich with the cobalt or copper uh, soils, especially in Gongo, uh, Dominic Republic, Gongo, and Zambia, uh, Central African region, and the seleniferous soil, the soil uh, contain more than 0.5 mg per kg of selenium in that soil, especially in Australia, and in India, and in Punjab, it's a highly uh, concentration of selenium. And the ecological significance of the metallophytes, any plants can able to accumulate metals, that's called the metallophytes. According to the Antonovius, the metallophytes seeds, the plant occurred in that metal enriched soil. Elective pseudo metallophytes, greatest vigor. The plant when they grew, able to grow very well in that uh, particular metalliferous soil. And the indifferent pseudo metallophytes, it in, uh, they have to indiscriminately the plants when they grow equally well, both the metalliferous and the normal soil. So that's called indifferently pseudo metallophytes. Uh, accidental pseudo metallophytes, a uh, lot of weeds and ruderals. Uh, they are sporadically grown in that place. Uh, what are the basic strategies uh, for the metal uh, tolerance? According to the Baker in the year of uh, 1981, they have broadly classified into uh, three uh, scenarios based on the accumulation ability of the heavy metals in plants, uh, excluder plant, indicator plant, and accumulator plant. The excluder plant, the metal when they cannot be able to uh, accumulate. They have to exclude the metal accumulation even from the root surface. That's the excluder plant. Mostly such kind of the plants when we can use it for the stabilization or mine site reclamation. Indicator plant, they have to show the toxicity symptoms and without uh, showing any toxicity symptoms like that. And accumulator plant, they have to be able to accumulate much uh, more heavy metals in the above ground part. But later, lin and uh, arts, they have to reclassify uh, in the, that uh, plant accumulation strategies into heavy metal sensitive plants. And these arrow indicates uh, metal accumulations by using uh, several transporters, uh, metal transporters in plants. And across the uh, cytoplasm and inside the cytoplasm, it, uh, the metals when they enters into the vacuolar uh, sequestration across the tonoplast membrane. So these are all some of the mechanism. And even from they have to enter into that cell wall and enters into the cytoplasm into the vacuolar sequestration. So many heavy metal transporters like uh, HMA4, NRAM, and uh, IRT. So many metal ion transporters are there and. Uh, uh, we need not go to in-depth about those things. And uh, this arrow indicates like that, and this is a metal exclusion or uh, other things. Um, heavy metal sensitive plants uh, and such kind of the plants is not able to tolerate uh, heavy metal toxicity. So these plants uh, we cannot consider for remediation purpose. Heavy metal resistant excluder plant. This is the ideal plant. This, they can able to, uh, even though they are not exclude the heavy metal concentrations enters into the plant roots, even in the plant roots but it can able to tolerate. And uh, this is the heavy metal tolerant, but non hyper accumulator. Even uh, though the plant when they can able to accumulate much more heavy metals in the root portion, and uh, they are not able to uh, translocate into the root portion, even the stems or leaves. So that uh, plant when they can ideal, can be ideal for using um, um, mine site reclamation and for the heavy metal uh, to hyper tolerant hyper accumulator plant. This is able to tolerate higher metal concentration and also they can able to accumulate much more heavy metals in the uh, above ground parts, especially in the leaf portion. That's the ideal candidate for the phyto extraction strategies. And in addition to that, uh, phyto extraction strategies, what is the hyper accumulator? As I have already mentioned, they can uh, plants can accumulate a higher heavy metal concentration in the soot biomass even when grown in the natural environment. 
and uh, they have to uh, criteria they have to threshold values fixed by vander and at all recently they have to redefine them because previously zinc also 10000 mg per kg it will be it is accumulate 10000 mg per kg in the leaf portion or above ground that that's called as a hyper accumulator and recently uh, zinc redefined vander and uh, at all redefined 3000 mg per kg manganese 10000 cadmium selenium thallium uh, 100 mg per kg and other metals 300 so these are all some of the threshold values uh, fixed with into that but in nowadays so many uh, research articles and they has been uh, published even in that uh, sporadically open access journals uh, some of the rudimentary uh, journals mushroom journals without impact factor journals even though they have to tested unrealistic environmental concentrations like uh, 100 ppm of cadmium 500 ppm of cadmium in the aquatic medium or hydroponic experiment and it is not a real concentration in the real environment and also they have used for so many uh, edible plant pots in generally we have been used any kind of uh, edible plants for such kind of remedies and practices so that's why uh, it is not a real hyper accumulator plants real hyper accumulator plants uh, even though for a lot of amaranthus the kirai vagal nu solluvom lot of amaranthus solanum and alium species and they can also uh, able to accumulate but in real scenario we can uh, we cannot use such kind of the plants for remedies and purposes uh, in the um, natural environment so we choose for the uh, first of all we use it to identify the indigenous hyper accumulator which kind of the plant with it is indigenously occurred in our uh, contaminated environment and uh, how the capacity and based on the threshold level and the accumulation level whether it is suitable for extruder or for the phyto hyper accumulator and according to that uh, the site condition and type of the plants we need to choose the strategies and also the recently for antonov viadis they have to use the several other uh, criteria enrichment factor that is simply called bioaccumulation factor if it is exceeds uh, more than one that's called the better and uh, less than one no 0.5 no enrichment and more than 10 severe enrichment uh, strategy and also the translocation factor from shoot to root and uh, from uh, soil to root root to shoot shoot to leaf leaf to grain like that and translocation indices from each and every pots and uh, if it is greater than 1 that is suitable for hyper accumulator accumulator and greater than 10 hyper accumulator and based on that we use either phyto stabilization or phyto extraction and in addition to that several criteria we need to follow that hyper accumulator plants the plants when is able to grow outside the geographical conditions it can be able to grow widely and the dual use plants uh, the petro crops like the jetropa carcass and the pongamia glabra and uh, prosopis juliflora and uh, such kind of the plants when we need to able to utilize it for decontamination program as well as for using the bioenergy purpose also so that's the dual use uh, plants and also the profuse root system with the fastest root growth and that plant can be able to diffuse or profuse the root system it can able to accumulate uh, more heavy metals even in the uh, deepest horizons uh, in generally uh, the heavy metals more than 80% of the heavy metals it's accumulate only in the top soil layer 0 to 20 cm layer and even though we used the profuse root system for a prolonged contamination of uh, contaminated sites and uh, another uh, ideal criteria is short duration annual crops or short rotation crop pieces with metallophilic root responses the metallophilic root responses is nothing but the metal uh, the plant when is uh, likely to grow only in the contaminated sites the root growth rather than the control uh, soil so that's why so many rhizobox experiments uh, has been conducted in our former research group in china and us and they have to prove such kind of metallophilic root responses especially in the uh, hyper accumulator plants and also high transport from uh, shoot uh, high transpiration rate and metal tolerance uh, ability and uh, biomass production high biomass production we need to more accumulation and ability to accumulate multi metal contamination and the plants can able to cadmium zinc lead simultaneously so we can use it to uh, remedy it, uh, so many metals in a single by using a single plant and economic interest and resistance to disease or pest but the ultimate thing is we need to unattractive to minimizing uh, animal to minimize the risk for food chain transfer risk even though the prosopis juliflora 
we used and that parts and other things when they, they used for animal feed uh, so we need to avoid such kind of the practices we need to pay more attention so uh, what about the geographical distribution of hyperaccumulators so far uh, to my knowledge the recent report according to that the global hyperaccumulator database it's operated by uh, uh, vander end group uh, from uh, Uh, France and uh, Europe, and 721 hyperaccumulators from 52 families they have identified so far, and they have a wide geographical area. And amongst uh, 721, more than 75 percent, uh, nearly 450 hyperaccumulator plants are uh, nickel uh, hyperaccumulator. It belongs to mainly for uh, Brassicaceae and uh, Fabaceae family, and especially New Caledonia, Cuba. southeast uh, asia brazil and southern europe uh, region and uh, especially for the copper and cobalt especially in the south central africa like uh, dominic republic congo and other region and uh, this is the recent scenario and uh, in the parenthesis uh, these are all uh, each uh, number of uh, hyperaccumulators in uh, each metals uh, this is the for example in each to cadmium and thallium this is the multiple metal accumulation uh, like that zinc and manganese each 12 cobalt and manganese like that multiple metal accumulation ability and uh, even though in our country we have a only very 2.4% of the geographical area we have a four uh, biodiversity hotspots are there but still uh, none of the hyperaccumulator plants when they has been entered into that such kind of the hyperaccumulator database global database even though we have a richest biodiversity country so we need to work more on the the aspects to identify the indigenous hyperaccumulator plants in that particular conditions and this is the phylogenetic tree and especially for the arabis paniculata and this plant uh, hyperaccumulator has been identified in our former research group and that can be able to accumulate both cadmium and zinc uh, heavy metals from our uh, former research group by professor uh, shu ronglayan in sun yatsen university china and these are all some of the hyperaccumulator plants alizum mural it's a specially for nickel hyperaccumulator and uh, teris nicata it is a kind of fern it's exclusively for arsenic uh, hyperaccumulator astragalus bisulfatus selenium and thlaspi cirrulescens are nowadays it's called the noxia cirrulescens and uh, both cadmium and zinc multiple hyperaccumulation capacity but like that the uh, thlaspi alspi so exclusively for zinc hyperaccumulation how many has to harmly only for cobalt so these are all some of the cobalt hyperaccumulators several uh, plants rhinorhea bengalensis uh, and uh, berkia kodi these two things alizum mural and uh, these are all the exclusively located in gango region and uh, what are the two kind of the species richness uh, endemism and uh, the in biodiversity you knew very well about the biodiversity hotspots we need to fulfill the two criteria endemism and the species richness endemism means indigenous and what type of the plants exclusively located in that particular region that's called endemism or indigenous and the richness of the species for that particular area based on these uh, two strategies these are all the hyperaccumulator uh, hotspots throughout the world especially in italy exclusively zinc nickel hyperaccumulator zimbabwe and uh, for the dr gongo uh, cobalt and uh, California, Cuba region in uh, go, uh, more than 800 or 900 species. New Caledonia region near France, it's more than thousand uh, plant species has been identified. Thousand uh, plant species from there has been uh, located, but so far they have been identified only 721 uh, hyperaccumulators. And uh, even though from uh, different uh, vegetation types, uh, ecosystems like. Uh, Uh, bushy vegetations uh, herbaceous vegetation shrub to bushy vegetations uh, different uh, vegetation types and uh, different uh, ecological conditions uh, and subalpine graminoid and mixed casuarina like that different ecological things and these are all some of the nickel hyperaccumulator recently identified by uh, professor vander end uh, from sabah malaysia especially in rhinorhea uh, and uh, rhinorhea bengalensis and uh, some of the other uh, plant species and uh, like uh, another one is for uh, philanthus balqui it is a uh, best uh, nickel hyperaccumulator plants and recently identified by nickel hyperaccumulation by professor alan baker he is the pioneer man one of the pioneer man or father of phytoremediation 
and now he is he uh, is the professor of uh, earlier he was in uh, university of sheffield in the department of botany now he is in university of uh, uh, australia uh, australia uh, melbourne university of melbourne australia and uh, i am work associated with uh, professor backer in china chinese research group and uh, to honor uh, such professor and that plant which has been identified by alan bakery uh, alan bakery uh, to honor uh, his name and these are all the hyper accumulator plants from the indonesia especially rhinorrhea bengalensis and philanthus uh, species this is the philanthus balqui exclusively located in the ultramorphic soil uh, that is the nickel enriched soil ultramorphic soil from saba malaysia and philippines this is exclusively for the selenium hyper accumulator plants located in the Uh, global region and this is the indigenous hyper accumulators It has been identified in our uh, former research group chinese research, uh, research group at uh, sun yatsen university under the professor chu ranglayan uh, my professor in, uh, they have identified arabis paniculata as i have already mentioned potentiella griffithi and picris divericata and these potentiella griffithi and uh, picris divericata they can able to accumulate cadmium and zinc also multiple uh, metal accumulation and some other chinese group they have also identified sadam malpredi it's a kind of a metal hyperaccumulator plant from chinese region the ultimate goal is for the vacuolar sequestration that can be accumulated into that uh, uh, particular uh, this uh, potential agrivity and picris divericata they can able to accumulate more heavy metals in the vacuolar region and that can be already proved in our former research group and was published in that uh, journal of hazardous material it's a high impact journal and at present it is a 9.3 impact factor 9.0 impact factor and uh, how uh, the sedum plant can be utilized uh, even for the agro mining strategies uh, even uh, such kind of the plants when they has been utilized with the agricultural uh, plants in the midst of agricultural plants uh, that can be utilized by some jiangtang province uh, by our former um, pdf colleague uh, 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 hu pengji and other research group in uh, nanjing uh, university and these are all the uh, intercropping phyto extraction with the sedum uh, plumpy zincova co cropping with the ziames field studies and uh, the recent manganese hyper accumulator eucalyptus species from south china and even though in tamil uh, lantana camera it is a um, uh, invasive species like unni chedi nu solluvanga it's a worst species in our uh, most of the for us especially in the western ghats uh, it is a potentially notorious weed appdin solranga but nowadays uh, that can be used as a remediation studies uh, it can be proved by lead zinc mining areas in um, hanyuan and uh, some of the provinces in china and it's uh, reported as cadmium hyper accumulator plant and in our uh, research group uh, from bharatiya university we identified prosobis juliflora Yes, um, like very carvel, sorra. Nammi po, adi aga din sorra. That can be used as a remediation studies, and it can be able to accumulate multi-metal uh, capacity. And uh, we have to identify uh, that capacity, and we have to publish the uh, since 2000 in uh, Pro World Congress at Malaysia. And now that plan can be several other researchers from Georgia, Toraspi, from US. They can utilize the so many research for that particular plant uh, tree species nowadays. and yes i have already mentioned uh, some of the petro plants uh, can be utilized for uh, uh, remediation purposes like uh, jetropa poplar trees and uh, eucalyptus uh, pinus uh, so many other uh, petro crops can be utilized and uh, how we need to conserve uh, such kind of the hyper accumulator uh, database or hyper accumulator uh, thing uh, vendor end uh, they have to set up uh, hyper accumulator garden in malaysia sabah and to protect such kind of the hyper accumulator species in that particular area and in a recent scenario and one part we have to utilize the such kind of the ability by phyto remediation aspect and another part for the beneficial uh, elements like selenium zinc uh, copper so even though every time uh, these kind of uh, essential uh, heavy metals or trace elements can be utilized for our uh, each and every organism even for plant and human beings animal so to uh, the, the how to uh, nullify the nutrient deficiencies that's called the bio fortification aspect so we can utilize it like um, two sides of uh, one coin the two strategies one strategy is phyto remediation another strategy to enhance the essential nutrients by 
fortification process and, and such kind of the this is the simple example how we have to utilize it to enhance the zinc hyperaccumulation uh, aspects in uh, alizum and uh, what are the database so far available for hyperaccumulator database as i have already mentioned few database uh, metals uh, it is a uh, university of sheffield operated by professor uh, alan baker and international serpentine ecology society this is the recent one uh, operated by uh, vander end group and phytorem database environment canada and center for mine well and rehabilitation by professor ravi naidu and his research group and he's also our uh, uh, <coughs> former research group and now he is in the university of uh, south australia at present and what are the other strategies uh, are the, to improve the phyto extraction strategies by the several biotechnological tools nowadays uh, they have to used uh, for several other aspects and in this phyto remediation and what are the uh, biotechnological tools when we used to enhance the metal mobility or enhance the accumulation binding capacity chelation and the conversion of the metal metalloid into less toxic by volatilization and how to increase the uptake from uh, root to shoot so so many things are uh, there and also so many omics approaches uh, transgenic strategies uh, including the cisgenic gene stacking and uh, gene editome techniques uh, recent technique crispr cas uh, talon uh, so many techniques when they has been utilized to uh, <coughs> better performance or a better outcome of the uh, phyto remediation uh, strategies and the most of the ongoing research even uh, is going on uh, arabidopsis thaliana about the phyto remediation strategies because this is the thalassemia or noxia cirrhosis it's a hyperaccumulator plant and the 88.5% of the dna identity codons uh, coding regions are similar so that's why most of the research uh, phyto remediation based research is going on on arabidopsis thaliana and what are the bibliometric analysis uh, about the recent bibliometric analysis the global perspective they have a linear uh, they have an increasing uh, strategy within uh, year by year and most of the things by the phyto extraction strategies uh, and especially for the uh, heavy metals even for patent and other things uh, uh, and these are all the general management of the contaminated lands and uh, even for the largest companies like phytotech in us and so many Uh, companies or the viridian and so many other uh, companies and they have to follow a specific procedures uh, how to handle the particular uh, remediation strategies depending upon the site conditions what are the type of the plants when we choose it, and uh, uh, like that and the ultimate goal is we need to expect some of the new economic opportunities uh, or commercial uh, benefits uh, from the uh, things uh, like bio fortification bio energy timbers or bio charts these are all some of the uh, economic opportunities either we can choose for the phyto extraction or phyto stabilization strategies the ultimate goal is we need to expect some of the economic uh, benefits uh, out of these strategies and uh, this is the general phyto remediation decision tree and cost wise it is a very low cost when compared to that of the other physical chemical strategies and uh, these are all some of the advantages uh, soil stabilization aesthetically pleasant cost effective eco friendly minimal environmental disturbances and still it's a time consuming and a long duration and maintaining vegetation phase off site migration and identification of the potential hyperaccumulator is one of the thing and so many things and minimize the dispersal of seeds and human health for further environment concern and nowadays we can use some other strategies like phyto mining or agro mining and once we have to harvested uh, the above ground uh, accumulated uh, plant pots we have to uh, ash by used by the pyrolysis method and uh, ash the all the above ground plant pots and extract the metal ore or valuable metal rich ore and other uh, valuable by products uh, uh, by using the pyrolysis method that is called phyto mining and uh, that kind of the practice when they can be utilized in the agricultural land especially in the albania region Uh, ultra mafic uh, rich region and uh, that's called agro mining strategy and we have to uh, uh, see that kind of the things in the latter and uh, the ultimate goal for indian institute of soil science uh, the about the strategic framework is one of the framework is minimizing soil pollution so we have to utilize such kind of the sustainable practice to minimize the soil uh, contamination 
uh, but uh, as i have already mentioned what are the phyto mining and agro mining and the ultimate cost is uh, energy uh, metal recovery or land reclamation even though we have to utilize the so many ecological benefits and the socio economic benefits also we obtained in addition to that the uh, uh, remediation aspects land re reclamation aspects this is the uh, as it mine drainage area and in our uh, former research group we utilized such kind of the gong dong uh, mine site it is a potentially uh, contaminated mine site the ph is less than 3 and we used uh, some other uh, plant like uh, kenaf plant and we used a jetrapo carcass uh, in a, such kind of the poly metallic mine sites for reclamation practices as i have already mentioned so many petro crops are used and professor prasad and he is also our well wisher and very eminent scientist in india uh, professor mnv prasad from university of hyderabad and he did a lot of work about uh, phyto remediation and also advisor for some other countries like poland and thailand so many countries and he published a brief booklet to submit it to the ministry of environment and forest climate change about the suitable plant ideal plant species for the things this is the nalco region and neeri how they have to utilize it for manganese mine site and so many mine reclamation practices from different plant species grevelia and uh, other uh, species grevella species uh, and phytolaca americana this is the see this kind of see manganese hyper accumulation even the reddish color it's accumulation for uh, iron and manganese uh, in the above ground plant pots and also for uh, prosopis juliflora yes i have already mentioned it and jetropa carcass uh, they can be utilized for the remediation purpose and also for the biomass extraction also bioenergy purpose and this is the poplar plant used in germany a transgenic site and how the agronomic practices we used it to add some of the fertilizers to increase the biomass and even in case if we increase the biomass we can accumulate more heavy metals so what are the agronomic practices we used for a prolonged period in terms of bio biomass and as well as the accumulation what are the outcomes so the positive side of the agronomic practices when they has been already published by Uh, Peter Petrakit and the other group, and Professor Prasad with the Thai group, and they have used the indigenous grass species uh, and uh, in the mine site reclamation to arrest the soil erosion because this is the open pit mine in Thailand, and uh, they can utilize it for open pit uh, mine site reclamation practices. And this is the father of uh, phyto mining strategy, Professor Rufus Chani in Mersville, Madison, Madison, USA. and uh, this is the laboratory and the field site uh, they have to utilize it for phyto mining hello 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 are you able to hear hello hello sir are you able to hear and uh, ultramorphic soil uh, sir uh, are you able to hear madam sir yes sir you proceed okay, sir no. okay okay can i continue yes sir yes sir okay madam and uh, these are all several ultramorphic uh, or outcrops are there and due to time time constraint i am not going to in depth and how these uh, kind of phyto mining when they has been utilized these are all the chemical uh, processes several bio ore processing for the pyrolysis and this is the viridian uh, company they have used for the phyto mining strategy in a commercial way for ashing and purification field collection harvesting ash and purified smelting and finally they have to obtain a uh, finished product metal finished product and this is the field site at port um, cali ontario canada and this is the alizam mural plant by using southwest oregon by uh, nickel nick anderson and alizam mural in uh, albania region Uh, near uh, the european region and how improving by using the fertilizers uh, by using alizam mural in a successful manner when compared to unfertilized uh, area and this is the philanthus balqui as i already mentioned and the same thing for the philanthus uh, rufus chani 
and based uh, to honor that Rufus Cheney professor, and they have to identify and uh, name it Philanthus Rufus Cheney in Sabah, Malaysia. And this is the Bertia Kodi. And why we need to pay more attention about the indigenous plant species? Because this is the same Bertia Kodi from New Zealand. And this is the indigenous South Africa. And they have to use it for in New Zealand. That plant cannot be able to grow very well because it's not an indigenous. It's from South African only. So that's why indigenous plant, when we need to pay more attention. Some other plant species, and due to time constraint, I am not to go to in depth. And uh, these are all the Bormularia uh, plant species, Psychotria gabriele, and uh, yeah, this is the Philanthus balcuii, and it's about uh, approximately 16% in sap and 25% in that Picantra uh, acuminata. This is the nickel accumulation in that particular area, and the same thing for the Trinoria bengalensis, Philanthus balcuii. And what are the options for nickel phytomining? So many options and research priorities are there. Yes, I have already mentioned so many options are there. Identification of metal contaminated sites, identification of indigenous plants, management, best management practices, best harvesting practices according to that plant species, and the post-harvest process of nickel. And after that nickel ore, we need to identify so many other byproduct, valuable byproduct. The similarly, uh, similar to nickel, gold also that can be extracted by using such kind of the technique in Victoria, Australia, and by used cyanide heap. By this is the strategy, and there is a profitability. Even there is a linear relationship between the extraction and profitability. And uh, these are all some of the example. And the agro mining strategy on the eve of the World Earth Day in the year of 2015. And uh, so many uh, uh, eminent scientists, even Professor Alan Becker, Rufus Chani, and our Professor Chu Ronglayan, they have to coin the term agro mining. How we use it, such kind of the strategy for the benefits of the uh, socially challenged, economically challenged persons like in uh, African region, uh, Gongo. So that's why they have to utilize the indigenous plant in Gongo region uh, for uh, hyperaccumulation practices, even that Philanthus uh, Rufus Chani. They have to uh, accumulate some other uh, metals also. And these are all the Philanthus Rufus Chani. They have to use it for field sites also. That can be proved uh, in that uh, several other ways uh, in Austrian serpentine soil also. And these are all the ideal hotspots, uh, herbaceous phytomining, Mediterranean region, or tropical Asia Pacific region. And the ultimate goal for both the phytomining and agro mining is to extract the metal enriched product uh, product or uh, and in addition to that some other salt and other things and uh, this is uh, how to enhance the quality of ash we need to collect so many product and the um, ultimate uh, outcome of the sustainable development uh, practices uh, yes you knew very well about the recently for environmental performance index our country is 168 position because we need to lack to follow the sustainable development goal practices. So this kind of that strategy is uh, comes under the life on land is one of the sustainable development goal, SDG 17, I think, life on land. And we have to follow such kind of the sustainable practices. We have to obtain it as carbon sequestration, so many benefits like enhanced soil biodiversity, renewable biomass production, and improved the agricultural crop productivity in terms of uh, to reclamate uh, some of the contaminated lands to some extent that can be utilized for agricultural practices later and stimulate the rural development, especially in the ultramorphic region. And uh, so many uh, projects, when they actually, especially two major projects, uh, it's going on at present agronical and life agronomy in. Uh, European region, these are all these different uh, network, European network region, even Austria, Poland, uh, Albania, and our uh, former uh, current research group is going on that uh, scenario. And our former research group, this is one of the best example for the uh, um, <coughs> field trial. And uh, this is Professor Alan, uh, Gary Banilos, it is our former professor in uh, uh, USDA ARS California. And uh, in that uh, southern San Joaquin Valley, California, it is a two kind of problem in a uh, single, same place, uh, in San Joaquin Valley place. And how we solve the selenium deficiency, one part of the San Joaquin Valley, uh, they have a, a problem. And another one is selenium uh, toxicity. And how we have to 
nullify the selenium deficiency problem at the same time to solve the selenium toxicity problem in a single solution and we used the brassica napus study study and uh, to for the fight for remedies and field trial in selenium contaminated sites after accumulation of uh, the selenium contamination we extract the oil and to mix it with a different blend and use it for biodiesel in that form at a red rock range that form when it contain more than 5000 acre and the remaining seed meal cake when can be utilized for the uh, nutrient or animal feed for uh, to nullify the selenium deficiency in cattle so this is a big project and uh, former uh, us uh, the california governor arnold schwarzenegger was uh, with much keen interest about that project and uh, they have allocated more funds and uh, unfortunately the trial biodiesel trial when has been operated only for the field level up to 5000 acres and the emission standard and other things according to the ASTM standard and that can be ex uh, published in that uh, uh, journal and uh, recently with the uh, ETH group uh, uh, professor Rainer Skulin uh, with uh, professor Gani, uh, Gary Banelos and uh, he utilized um, the Kallichidin uh, Opensia and uh, they used it for the selenium accumulation and uh, now the selenium tablet they have to buy company Rexal company and these are also field trial and so many SWAT analyses are there. What are the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats? And uh, so many knowledge uh, explosion in uh, we need to strength. We have an enormous diversity. Yes, I have mentioned earlier, we have a 2.4% land. We have four biodiversity hotspots are there in India. And sustainability concept, omic technologies we applied. But weakness, lack of knowledge, especially in polluted sites in India and other developing countries. And a lack of agro technology, lack of stakeholder involvement, because in that uh, earlier the US project, uh, the uh, land owner is one of the stakeholder, John Diener, and uh, that he also um, uh, gave the land and also is one of the stakeholder for that particular project. And uh, GM crops is one of the uh, major moratorium against that one. And what are the opportunity? Lot of polluted lands, lot of opportunity for multi-cropping, bioeconomy, entrepreneurship, and threat is uh, we need to pay more attention on the health practice, climate change, and uh, certification of that uh, byproduct. That is one of the uh, main thing. And as I have already mentioned, and so nowadays the nano materials, so many nano materials when they can be used for remediation. And I am not going to in depth about those things. And these are all some of the publications in our research group and uh, how we utilize it for the phytochelatins and other biosynthetic intermediates for uh, metal tolerance ability in trees, uh, cell suspension culture. And also for that uh, phytochelatin identification in our former research group by Professor Rakesh Minocha in USDA, uh, New Hampshire. And we obtained a very shortest method up to 34.8 minutes method. So far, this is the shortest method. And earlier methods, it uh, comes around one hour or 60 minutes uh, for the entire run, including column uh, wash. But this is the very shortest method. So we need to save more uh, time and also for solvents. It's a very costly solvents, nitro acetonitrile we used. And this is some of the other reviews, uh, uh, even for uh, non-enzymatic uh, antioxidant and other things. And this is the uh, exclusively, what are the molecular approach we implemented for uh, mine site re rehabilitation. This is our recently uh, it's a published book by Environmental Sustainability uh, with our collaborator Sri Devi from Madurai Kamraj University by what are the sustainable practices followed and uh, covered by this book and uh, why we need to pay more attention about that soil health and our government of Tamil Nadu has implemented Manvala Atai soil health card in, uh, since 2015 and uh, later 2016 and uh, the government of India has implemented that scheme and in our university, Periyar University and with the support of our authorities, we conducted every year on the eve of World Soil Day on December 5, we conducted several programs especially in the farmer interaction program rather than the scientist interventions in that um, uh, farmer interaction program and in the World Soil Day, International Soil Day, and we have conducted an international seminar and awareness program every year we have conducted. And also for mine site reclamation, what are the tools, on-site tools with the Professor M.N. V. Prasad 
and for the sail refractory and tan mag we, they we have to conduct it with the mine site people because yes we are in that uh, mining area salem and we have to conduct it several progra uh, programs in associated with the uh, entrepreneurs and uh, also we conducted every year uh, a conference related with the ecosystem and environmental themes and uh, the ultimate goal is we have to utilize such kind of the practices especially for the sustainable uh, technologies and uh, such kind of uh, these phyto technologies or phyto remediation is one of the sustainable practices especially in the life on land so i would uh, we uh, would like to utilize the any kind of sustainable practices to save our environment either in life on below water life on land or climate action zero hunger clean and uh, water sanitation clean water and sanitation and uh, to at least we need to uh, utilize such kind of the sustainable technologies to attain uh, our goal and to increase our environmental performance uh, index in our country so up to this i would like to uh, conclude my talk and i would like to thank uh, so many uh, part uh, this uh, contain several research work in usda china and uh, funding support by moef and cc and uh, dst and uh, currently two operated pro research projects major research projects uh, in phyto remediation and bio fortification and also i would like to thank the authorities of tanmag and uh, srcl icl india cements vedanta group for uh, giving a permission to enter that mining sites and uh, to <clears throat> for the project and the slovak environment agency for uh, the recent uh, visit and mou for that one and these are all our research collaborators uh, at present uh, for our current research group and uh, <clears throat> thank you thank you so much and if you have any clarification or questions one or two questions uh, it's okay if time permits uh, and otherwise you can uh, <clears throat> give your questions into a chat box and uh, i'm sure i will uh, try to solve your questions thank you thank you very much thank you thank you so much for the mind blowing talk sir thank there you. are some questions posted in chat box sir shall we read it sir yes madam uh, yeah. um so uh, there are some questions uh, can you suggest what type of plant should we grow in the soil which contains more iron and manganese in tamil nadu i have more iron and manganese iron and manganese uh, yes. and uh, this is generally for uh, iron uh, ore mine site lot of indigenous plants are there first of all as i have uh, initially mentioned and uh, such kind of strategy is mainly when the due to um, for depending upon the site condition and the type of the plants when we chosen uh, choose these two things are most important so in generally for iron ore mine site or for aluminum bauxite mine site lot of plants are there and uh, we can't specifically mention uh, this is the particular plant but uh, the research is going on and we have already identified several hyperaccumulator plant especially in manganese and iron but still it is in publication stage we can't explore uh, those data but uh, the my suggestion is we need to uh, survey uh, several uh, times uh, minimally for uh, the prolonged survey uh, not for a particular period for prolonged survey for 2 to 3 years we have already conducted those mine sites for 3 uh, years already we worked and to collect plant species at a different uh, time or a different time uh, either uh, like this different seasons uh, even summer season winter or post mining uh, season like that and based on that we have to assess the, and we have to meet out all the threshold level criteria tolerance capacity and uh, that particular plant especially it's located uh, or tolerate in that particular area in that uh, so that's the most uh, important even though if any kind of plant we have tested in the laboratory conditions either part experiment or for the uh, field trial uh, to add more iron or manganese that can able to accumulate but in real condition that plant when they cannot be able to grow in contaminated sites like mine sites so that's why we need to identify the contaminated sites and identify the indigenous plants these two things are laborious works first of all funding and also for uh, the sample cost analysis because we entirely depends upon the icp so we utilize the icp facilities to some other uh, central universities because in our institute we have no icp facilities so we have utilized uh, some other facilities and also the funds when they can be allocated by funding agency for other project costs like uh, such kind of analysis 
they have to pay more than uh, 500 rupees uh, for a single metal so we need to analyze all the metals so it's a time consuming laborious uh, and for the cost wise uh, uh, we need to uh, pay more so that's why uh, this is the fundamental thing so based on that we have to choose the plant species according to the type of the site condition and uh, the plant species what are the plant species that dominate in that particular area okay sir sir uh, one more question sir many of them have asked about a heavy metal accumulation and remediation in plants sir um, one question is shall we use plants for remediate heavy metals in water samples and how to confirm that plants absorb heavy metal after planting in specified area yeah because even we can utilize as i have initially mentioned such kind of uh, the strategy we can utilize it both in either terrestrial environment or in aquatic environment if we utilize the such kind of the phyto remediation strategy to uh, treat the industrial effluent and after uh, primary treatment secondary and tertiary treatment and nowadays we can utilize the wetland uh, the strategy or uh, some other uh, strategies we utilized in that uh, particular uh, phyto remediation strategies and uh, based on that uh, the rhizo filtration uh, the metals one can be accumulated in the root portion or above ground portion and that plant one can be utilized and so many industries uh, they have to utilize it after treating uh, by using the physico chemical method and they have to utilize it such kind of the plant as an activity and these uh, treated effluent can be utilized within the industrial premises to uh, for the tree growth or plantation growth so they have to benefit uh, to increase the tree cover within the industrial premises at the same time to treat the effluent also and the how we have to analyze the metal accumulation by using uh, icp or ais icp is more ideal it is more accurate at present icp oes inductivity coupled plasma oes heavy metal for heavy metal analysis okay sir thank you so next question yes. is plant extract is the only so source for the extraction of nanoparticles and how shall we separate the metal from aqueous extract uh, but uh, to, uh, to my knowledge i am not uh, go to in depth about the nanoparticles and so many research work when there is going on uh, to extract the nanoparticles from the uh, plant and they have to utilize it for the remediation purpose but they have a nano toxicology aspect is another one side and nano remediation technology mainly they have to utilize it for uh, aquatic and other things and nowadays recently they can use it for the soil remediation also and to my knowledge i am not going in depth about the nano particular nano remediation okay sir the in our research group we have concentrated on phyto based aspects sir. okay is there any cryptogram used in phyto remediations cryptogram used in phyto remediation cryptogram means i am not uh, able to understand that one cryptogram used in phyto uh, remediation sir cryptograms uh i'm not get that uh, question clearly okay sir sir uh, you have answered almost all the questions uh, no just yes, yeah, after accumulation we need to utilize the icp oes for that uh, analysis uh, for accurate analysis of heavy metal accumulation and in also several other uh, technology nutrient activation analysis and uh, image analysis and uh, so many other analysis when the can be utilized for uh, yeah, uh, subcellular localization at present they like, like pixi analysis and other analysis they have to utilized uh, recently and the neutron activation technology and the mapping technology and uh, even though for the plant samples it be utilized immediately they can mapping uh, different colors uh, and uh, that pixi technology and they have to utilize in western countries like uh, vogel mikes research group in uh, poland they can a pioneer and even for mary lee grunet uh, uh, grunet from uh, us dartmouth medical college they utilize it very well for such kind of technology i am i don't know about cryptogram and like that okay, uh, final question kindly suggest some heavy metal tolerance plants 
heavy metal tolerance plant and uh, yes i have already mentioned different threshold levels first we need to identify it uh, with such kind of the plant when it has a higher biomass plant and sh annual short rotation crop pieces uh, we need to harvest it frequently like once in 3 months uh, like that and uh, also high biomass we need to accumulate more biomass and also high transpiration rate some plants they can accumulate only in the root portion they are not able to translocate uh, because of less transpiration capability so we need to more transpiration uh, transpiration rate irukran paru then and uh, accumulation capability and we need to uh, harvest the above ground plant, uh, biomass and uh, test that one and also even if we need to more is uh, thing subcellular localization and also to uh, tolerance capacity by biosynthetic component uh, what are the uh, uh, synthetic compound like uh, metallothioin plant metallothioin or phytochelating uh, phytochelating is the major role for this one because metals when the binding with that uh, thiolate groups the uh, sh group and once it's a thiolate groups on it they can enter into that vacuole into that uh, sorry in a cytoplasm into that vacuolar transportation across the tonoplast that's the vacuolar sequestration so we need to uh, analyze such kind of the secondary metabolites especially sulfur based secondary metabolites and uh, nitrogen based secondary metabolites so many and their biosynthetic intermediates so many amino acids are there like arginine arnithin um, like that for the polyamine that's an n containing metabolite and for sulfur containing metabolites so many metallothioin or for methionine uh, so glycine uh, so many other amino acids are uh, precursor glutathione precursors uh, glutathione is the first line defense mechanism for plant metal uh, aspects metal defense mechanism once the metals enters into the cytoplasm immediately Uh, before the phytochelating synthesis glutathione will act as a first line defense mechanism in addition to that several uh, role uh, of uh, glutathione in plant so we need to analyze uh, such kind of the secondary metabolites and the concentration of secondary metabolites and subcellular distribution aspects and these are all the scientifically proved evidence but the randomly choice is we need to uh, test the accumulation ability how much that can accumulate what are the threshold criteria and based on that threshold criteria we have to publish whether it is a hyper accumulator but in real situation whether that plant when can be able to grow in that uh, harsh environmental conditions uh, especially in that mine sites or other uh, severely polluted contaminated sites so that's why we need to identify the uh, suitable uh, not suitable uh, the site conditions potentially contaminated site conditions and what are the plant species existing in that particularly potentially contaminated sites and then only we can uh, choose the, uh, our plant species based on that uh, uh, criteria in generally uh, the plants uh, uh, grew very well in that conditions they have fulfilled almost all the criteria whatever we have to uh, mention in that uh, one of the slide like a criteria for that uh, Uh, metal tolerance or hyper accumulator like metallophilic root responses uh, profuse root systems uh, and so many other things uh, criteria thank you sir thank you for this wonderful inter interactive session